Good afternoon, my turtle ducks. Just in time for tea. Please help yourself. I've got sugar and honey and cream or lemon, and we've got jam and butter for the tea cookies. For today, I thought we might talk about conversations. I don't know about you, my little turtle ducks, but I still sometimes have trouble coming up with witty conversation at dinner or on dates, so I thought I might share with you some of my go-to tricks if I'm having a hard time. The first rule of conversation is engagement. You want to make sure that everyone talking is engaged and interested. I'm not always the best at following popular topics for a given group, but leading questions are an excellent way to get people talking. Remember that if you cannot think of something to say, try thinking of a question. People are generally happy to talk about the things that excite them, and it will help you figure out where you might be able to relate to them or what you might have in common. Here are three topics I really have good luck with. What kind of music do you like? What do you do for fun? Do you like animals? This one you can follow up with. Do you have any pets? If you're on a date or at a dinner party, you could ask about the food. If it's a place you're familiar with, ask them if they like that kind of food or if they have a favorite dish or item. If it's a place you're not familiar with, Ask about what kind of food they suggest, or what they think is good. People generally like to help, and they like to feel experienced or smart, so asking these kinds of questions can bolster other people into conversation as well. That's really it. Once you get the ball rolling and get someone talking, it's pretty easy to keep the conversation going with small, personalized questions. If it's someone you like, or someone you want to be closer to, try to keep track of key information. If they have pets, what kind? Can you remember the pet or pet's names? What sort of food did they like? Have they had good or bad experiences at certain places or with certain foods? If they like a particular kind of music, what bands or artists are they fans of? Keeping up with this kind of information will help you later. People like to be remembered and it makes them happy if you can remember specifics, so try to remember as much as you can. It's okay to write things down, but try not to do it in front of people. It will stilt your conversation and make you look distracted. Now for some things not to do. We'll start with distractions. Try to keep your eyes on the person you're having conversation with. Looking into the distance if you're talking or noticing things around you is fine, but try to keep somewhere between 70 to 80% of your attention on the other person or people in the group. If you can, Try not to use your phone unless you're using it to reference or show them something. Some people consider it rude to look them in the eye. In the US, where I am native, it is often considered a sign of low confidence to avoid eye contact. You can mitigate this by either looking at a person's lips, which has the added bonus of helping to understand what they are saying, or the bridge of their nose. Either way, try to keep your focus on some part of them. Hands may be tempting if they're a hand talker, but it might make your companion self-conscious if you're only looking at their hands. If you struggle with focusing on just one thing, try to have an object you can play with, preferably something that is quiet so it is not too distracting from the conversation. If you have a difficult time being still for long periods, you can usually get a conversation move physically as well. Even at a party, you could ask your conversationalist if they would like to join you in getting another drink or to get more food, so you can get up and walk around without having to excuse yourself from the conversation. If you're on a date, try to plan ahead and make it a date with movement involved. A trip to the zoo, botanical gardens, aquarium, or even just a park. These places usually have designated sitting areas, but are also perfect for talking and walking, and you'll rarely run out of subjects to talk about. Just point out anything in your surroundings. Let's go over a little bit of online conversation etiquette. When starting a conversation online, it is generally agreed that things may be a little less formal. However, if you're sending a direct message and it is your first contact with that person, please make sure to introduce yourself. It is a good idea to give a compliment or to attempt to engage the person with something you think they might like. If you check their profile or their posting history, you should be able to find something to talk about. Now, what should we not do when direct messaging someone? 
One should never send obscene or hateful messages. It will not gain you anything, and it can do harm both to the person you message and to yourself. To quote Bambi, If you can't say something nice, don't say nothing at all. Additionally, unsolicited requests are generally unwelcome on the first or even the second messaging conversation. Keep in mind that most people will start at neutral upon receiving a message, and while some people are happy to do little favors, it is generally off-putting if it feels like you only reached out to ask for something. People want genuine conversation, and it can be disappointing if it feels like the conversation was just a means to an end. Alright my turtle ducks, what we'll discuss next can be the hardest part and will probably take a great deal of experience. I am only just able to do it myself, but I keep working to improve, and that is ending conversations. At some point, all conversations end. The key is to make it a natural one and not awkward. Some places this is easy. You can jump from one conversation to another if there are multiple people present. If it's just one person, try to bring a good conclusion to the conversation and try to practice being comfortable in the quiet between conversation pieces. It is good practice to just be comfortable with a bit of breathing room. If it's at the end of an interaction and you'll be leaving, see if you can make plans to meet up again or offer your contact information to people you enjoyed talking to the most. If it is just the end of a subject, try existing quietly for a few moments. Use the time to try and recall any important information you were given so you can send it off to long-term memory. To review, starting a conversation can be tough, so try to use your surroundings as a jumping off point. Are you eating? Ask if they like the food. Are you out and about? Ask their opinion on the scenery or point out an interesting feature and why you think it's interesting. Even if they saw it, they are more willing to share their own thoughts after you volunteer yours. Be careful to maintain perceived focus by looking at your conversation partner. If you have a difficult time of focusing or staying still, try to choose a location that allows movement, like a park, or if you're at a dinner party, ask to move around. Finally, all conversations must end. Allowing for a natural ending and natural breathing room in a conversation is important. If it's time to go, express your interest in speaking again and try to set up a future time or offer your contact information. Well, I think that's all I have time for today. I should get back to work. Thank you for joining me today. Until next time, be kind, my little turtle ducks, to others and to yourself.